Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. In this video, I am going to talk about content security policy in Pekka. First, let's understand what is content security policy. It is a security layer that protects the browser from loading contents from untrusted sources. Okay, now when we talk about content, the content can be JavaScripts, the content can be some kind of fonts, some kind of images. If you take any application, definitely they may need content. So here I'm not talking about the data, but the content, the JavaScript code and the images are those content, right? So why do we need a security layer? When we load some content from some kind of untrusted sources, it can open up some kind of attacks. It can be cross-site scripting attacks. When you load a JavaScript file, they can inject some malicious code that can affect your application. So definitely we should be adding some kind of security over that, right? In Pega, content security policy can help those and secure your content. So basically what you do is you can define all the origins from where the content can be loaded or it can be shared. So a common content security policy directive, it looks like this. You will have a content security policy on the HTTP browser response header and then you will have the value, the directive, the value, the directive, then value. When I say directive values, there are a lot of directives available. As you can see, the most commonly used directives are first is the fetch direct. So what do you mean by fetch directive? Again, when your application needs some JavaScript from an external origin, we will be fetching that by using that domain name. We directly refer to that URL to fetch the JavaScript. We can directly refer to the URL to fetch the images. If you want to embed any Google image, you have to fetch it from the URL, right? It will be www.google.com, then an image name. So these are all like the fetch directive. So you can control from which origin you can fetch these contents using these fetch directives. So there are a lot of fetch directives, which we will see when we get into Pega application. And there are other two directives as well, like the document directives and navigation directive. Let's see some examples of directives that get loaded into the browser. I just opened a simple website. This is a bold website, just an e-commerce website in Netherlands. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open my developer tools and I'm going to have my network ready. I just cleared everything. And then I'm just refreshing the home page. Now it loads all the content that stays in the home page, right? So what I want to check is just navigate and get to the main document. So this is the main document. And here I see a response header, content security policy, right? This is what I mentioned before. So you have the response header, content security policy, and then you have the directives, you have the report directives. You have the fetch directives. So this is the directive name and this is the value. This is the directive name, this is the value. So for every directive, you define some kind of URLs or the domains which allows for those content. You can just navigate and check all the different directives. I can quickly see there is a media source directive that, that refers to some of the blob content into some domain. So by this way, all the applications, they can use the content security policy to secure their application contents. Okay, now it's time. Let's go to Design Studio and see how we can secure our Pega application using content security policy. Let's get started. So here I have logged in into the Design Studio and I just opened the application rule. Warranty management is my application. Now, where do you specify a content security policy? As I told already, you have to secure your application with the content security policy. So definitely the configuration stays within the application. It is on the security tab. Just navigate here and then scroll below. Here you find that you can specify a policy name, a content security policy name. So definitely Pega has a configuration instance where you can configure your content security policy. Let's see how we can use that configuration instance. Go to security and there you will find something called content security policy. Just to open it, you will find the out of the box content security policies. I'm just going to open the PX default allow all. As you can see, this is a final rule. And from the name itself, we can just understand that it just allows all. It means like 
this is not a really a secured one it just allows all the origins if you look at different directives so when i say directives we already saw how the directives looks you can see some directives like the frame ancestors style source right all these directives were added into the header likewise in pega we have the low code configuration you see all those directives are grouped under different blocks so under each block you can specify the configuration for those directives before we saw that we just add different urls right we can do four type of configuration here first if you say none you don't allow anyone and if you say allow all it means like you are allowing everything every origin you allow you can also find the same description here self in the sense currently my host is this is my host right so this is my community pega community edition so i can allow whatever content that is falling under my own host for sure if i use some image into my own binary file i can very well use it because it's already secured it is in my own content i can always use my content so this is more like a high secured way if you allow only your content you can just enable self and then just disable everything and data data is part of referring to some kind of object it can be like a blob or a binary object that is already in line within your application let me explain you little later you will also understand what this data means okay now we have these four default configuration allow all allows everything self it allows only your application content and then you can also allow different allowed websites because ideally you should be doing like this like you should disable these two allow yourself always and then you just allow the websites from where you can load the scripts load the images you may have maybe two three websites only refer those websites here so how do you refer the websites you just say the website domain name and then just include it so this is just for one directive you will find the same kind of configuration for almost all the directives you can just navigate for connect source font source where we can load fonts and then you have frame ancestors i will also explain it little later frame ancestors is part of navigation directive and then we have lot of fetch directives the image source the media source and then we also have the script source where the java scripts can be loaded okay i'm not going to explain everything but i'll just concentrate only on the main directives which we use first is the connect source let's say if you want to use some kind of ajax records to different websites you can very well use this connect source and provide that url or the domain and next is font sometimes your application may use some google fonts mostly fonts can be installed into your own machine but in some situation if you want to use the fonts that are available outside make sure you specify the url or the google fonts into allowed websites otherwise you cannot use those fonts so if you want to fetch those fonts you can use this fetch directive font source and let me first complete all the fetch directives and then you have something called child frame if you want to embed some kind of content into your own application let's say you have bold.com website right if you want to embed the bold.com website into your website you can say child frame source and specify the url what so only then those urls will be allowed to embed into iframe content okay now i'm talking about pega application is embedding an external website as an iframe definitely there will be some kind of content security policy implemented in the other application right the bold application because they don't want to allow their websites to get embedded everywhere it can affect at lot of places so there what they might have done is they will they will do something like frame ancestors it's like a parents if my pega application is specified as allowed website into bold frame ancestors content security policy they might have their own content security policy and in their content security policy if they have pega application website only then i can embed their website into my iframe tag so what i meant here is this is the bold website they have all the directives now if you search for frame ancestors you see what it means is no one can just embed the bold website as an iframe into any kind of website they only allow themselves so it means even if i try to embed from a pega application i can't just do that similarly 
if our pega application if we want to embed our pega application into a different website for example some mashup things you can very well specify it into this place and then image source media source we all know if you want to refer some kind of image definitely you have to specify that into allowed websites similarly for medias like the video audio file if you want to refer it as a direct url then you have to specify those into here and finally the remaining fetch directives scripts javascripts if you want to load specify styles if you want to load some css styles that are available over the internet or over the external websites definitely you have to specify it under here and for style and script you will also find something called unsafe inline unsafe eval and pega recommends or pega strongly advise to make sure use both these configurations when you create your own content security file because pega works in the way although it is kind of considered as unsafe it is recommended to use both these options for script source as well as style source okay now we saw all about this default thing right let's do something let's create a new content security policy and then specify it into the pega application and do some testing and see how content security policy works and how we can debug the content security policy okay i'm going to quickly create my content security policy Okay, one thing we always need to remember is whenever we create a rule pega by default does some default configuration right if you are not sure always leave it to the default and only in situation or based on your need you can always update it but let me show the default configuration what pega did is if you look everywhere it has a strict content policy it means it just allows everything as self see default source is self base uri is self contents connect source is self so everything is self now okay let's do a test i'm not going to do or allow any kind of websites i'm just going to do a save so i created a new content security policy and then i go to the application and use the content security policy so here we have two mode report only it just reports and here it also blocks the content okay for now let's just do a report only do a save okay i have created my content security policy now let's do the testing i have a case management already ready so what i can do is i'm going to show you in the case management let me create a new case i'm just trying to use some kind of image to do that i'm still going to use bold.com go to the elements and there i just want to use any of the bold image the image that is loaded in the bowl website there i see a social title okay so this is the image which i'm trying to load okay i will see if i can load this image directly by referring the website into my pega application i'm going to use this option and then i'm going to use the rich text editor and parallelly i'm going to use the developer tools using developer tools you can easily debug your content security policies i can already see there are three errors because i didn't use data i already told you right there is something called data so that can also use some inline images so pega by default it uses a lot of inline images so maybe it is best that you also enable the data thing so that is why you already see the error so the error will be like this because it violates the following content security policy it will give you the right directive which violates so image source we have it as self only we accepts the image that are from the pega application or from the source url now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy this image and then try to paste it into my rich text editor okay here what you get is you still get the image but you just report it in the browser as an error now let's do one more thing if i go here and then if i strictly say i'm going to reject it i'm not going to allow it now let's go do a refresh and then try to paste you see it refused now now a strict policy is updated you cannot see the image right just like how we saw before we cannot see it because it doesn't report it also rejects it okay how to allow this now simple step you have to go to your content security policy and make sure in the image source you allow the website so what is the url for this 
it's bold.com right just refer the right one and then do a save now i'm just going to refresh so the content security policy is applied again now if i do like this i try to copy the image and i'll try to paste it again this time there is no error right i don't see any kind of content violation so this is how you can allow so normally when you work for any organization definitely you can allow the organization's website maybe you may load some kind of images or there can be some kind of content which you may be loading from your own primary website or your organization website so your pega application ideally can always include those because it's always trustable right okay this is one similarly let me do one more thing let me try to include some kind of javascript so i'm going to find another script now okay it seems bold is using some javascript file the google google analytics javascript file if you look at their content security policy definitely they will be allowing this google analytics so that they can load the javascript from the google analytics if we want to do a google analytics ideally pega has a component which has this javascript loaded but maybe i will explain it in a separate video but just try to understand that if your pega application need to load some javascript that is in an external origin or an external website you have to allow that origin let's say you want to use this script so i'm just going to use the entire script tab in pega i'm going to use it in user work form for now let me just do a private edit so this will be applied to all the user work forms create a script quickly i'm going to create it okay what i do here is in the html fragment i'm just referring a javascript source a content source that is outside of my pega application and this user form will always be loaded into your case user work form or the case work area now what i can do i'm already into the work area so all i can do is just refresh and see if i'm able to load the javascript i go to the console i clear everything i'm going to do a refresh okay refuse to load the script right definitely because google analytics.com is never added and i allow only self let's verify it quickly if i go to script source you see i just allow only self now to allow what you have to do just simple allow this website now let's do another refresh this should be gone only the image loading you get now the javascript is successfully loaded so by this way you can implement your content security policy in pega in a very low code way as a best practice my suggestion would be like create a new content security policy per application define your content and don't just allow everything always use self and then you can also define or specify the necessary allowed websites also remember that this content security policy can also be applied at the tomcat level for a pega application it is recommended to have all those content security policy into this rule directly so that you can control it per application instead of putting it under the server level i hope i made this video interesting and informative and i hope you learn something new so whenever you get any issues with content security policy go to the console tab find the right directive check your content security policy and there you can fix your issues see you in the next video